On today's Career Growth Made Easy podcast, we're going to see the top reasons why employees are leaving their jobs. Stay tuned to find out how you're doing in your job and how your company fares against these survey results. Welcome back to the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Craig Ansell, and we're rolling into episode 106, Why Employees Are Leaving Their Jobs. I took a look on the web and came up with a couple companies that did some recent survey results, and that's going to be the focus of today's show. One such company, TheHustle.co, did an early 22 survey, and they said, the great resignation could be the new economic buzzword of the pandemic. They surveyed over a thousand people who left their jobs during the pandemic. I'm going to go over some of the top reasons why people did these things. 27% said better pay was the reason. 17% they found a more rewarding job. Another 17% stated burnout was the fact that they left. Now I'm going to take a pause on that one. If you've been listening to me for quite some time, you know that I'm a big fan of Dave Ramsey. He's a great financial coach that helps you budget and get out of debt. In what such podcast interview, he talked about the fact that he had an employee come to his office, sit down, slam down in the chair, just hump over, hunch over and say, oh, Dave, I'm burned out. Dave looked at him and said, that's impossible. You have to be on fire first. The point behind that, when we say burnout, is that truly the situation or are we making something up in our heads thinking that we're working hard and giving our all when in all reality, we just can't make the cut? But that's another discussion for another episode. Fourth on the list was 10% say they found a new career path. So they completely switch things up. Now, and a segue for that, I think that's important to know that if you're in a situation, you're in an economy, you're in a particular job situation where you've given your all, you've turned over every rock, you've done everything you can, and either you're just not happy with your situation or you feel it's time to explore new avenues, maybe looking for increased pay, a more challenging job. Yes, it is completely possible to start a new career path. Not only can you repurpose yourself, but you will need to repurpose your resume. And if you need any help with that, I have some free content on my website, craigansell.com, where I have some free downloads. I also have additional podcasts that talk about repurposing yourself and your resume. One such show was called, Is My Resume Old? So go ahead and take a look at that if you're looking to repurpose yourself. The bottom line, these top four items are pretty shocking. Here's the fifth one, though. 8% said they left a company because of lack of flexible work atmosphere. The details went on to say there was no work from home or alternate work location policy. That amazes me because now we're into, I think, the third year of the pandemic, and a lot of companies, a lot of businesses have learned from such things. They've actually endorsed it and supported it in many cases and come to find out even large companies, Fortune 500 companies, while learning from this, are seeing the financial benefits. By having less overhead in the offices, people working from home using their own internet, their own power, their own resources, they don't have as much administrative support in the offices or as much utility support. They can actually turn lights off in certain sections of the building, maybe raise the air conditioning temperature so they're not cooling as frequently. A number of things can be a benefit. Now, collaboration, for example, might be a concern if you're a business owner listening, but knowing that we have so many software technologies out there for audio conferences, visual conferences, um, I can think of Zoom, Google Meet, there's uh, Microsoft Teams, there's just a number of applications out there that can, you can do audio and visual conferences. Not only that, but they're not just one-on-one anymore, it's one-on-many. You can literally hold large team conferences internationally all through the internet. 
So technology has come a long way. So really, it kind of shocks me to be on this podcast in June of 2022, after we've been through two full years of COVID and the pandemic, and hearing that 10% of employers approximately are not supporting work from home or alternate work locations. And that's at least what these employees are thinking when a thousand plus people were surveyed. Going on to a different survey from CNBC.com, which was January of this year, they say the biggest reason people quit is, and you know what? It's 10 times more important than pay. What is that biggest reason? Well, the data on their turnover rate was based on employees leaving a company during a six-month recent period of the pandemic. They also looked at Glassdoor, and they said reviews from recent years, both before and during the pandemic, supported the fact that culture metrics of nearly 600 companies were summarized. And this led to the conclusion, here it comes, of a toxic work environment, a toxic culture being the biggest factor that employees leave their jobs. Now that significantly differs, excuse me, that significantly differs from the first survey, but I for one know that if you're in a toxic work environment and there can be a number of reasons why, it certainly can make you want to consider leaving and do that on a regular basis. Their reviews identified top indicators for a toxic environment, and these were seen as lack of support or lack of promotion of diversity, equality, and inclusion. Some felt disrespected, had concerns of unethical behavior, and that their company and employees lacked integrity. All those things made it on the list as well. Another top item, failure to recognize performance. Again, if you've been listening to Career Growth Made Easy podcast for any time, you know that's a key contributor. Not only do I challenge you, the listener, to make sure that you're giving your all and striving for high performance, but that your high performance is value added and it matters to the company. It's important that you do what's right for the company, but also what provides value. You can work hard but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to provide good quality product or a good quality service. You have to remember why you were hired and what your job description entails and what is your ultimate goal, the ultimate vision for your job and for your company. What are you trying to produce? What are you trying to support? There can be so many things that get in the way of being a high performer that you could be Uh, feeling overworked, even burned out some days, but yet you're not making a dent in the bottom line. Not only the financials of the company you work for, which is the key, if they don't make money, they can't afford to pay you or retain you, but that you're making a quality product or service for the end customer. So maybe it's this episode, while we're talking about why employees are leaving their jobs, this episode might just cause you to pause for a moment and think, What is it, Craig, that I do on a daily basis that contributes to the true bottom line? Yeah, you're right. I do work hard. And many times I come home with a headache. I may be red in the face or, you know, sweaty or overwhelmed from my job. But if you stop and look, look back at what you contributed to today, yesterday, last week, last month, how much of that truly impacted the bottom line? So that's just a little self-challenge that I offer you. I'm always here on social media at Craig Ansell for Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram if you want to have a conversation, or you can email me directly, craig at craigansell.com, and I'm happy to have a discussion with you if you're concerned about your situation, maybe even considering leaving and seeing what alternative, what options there are. I'm happy to speak to you confidentially. Back, though, about feeling not recognized. When employees don't feel recognized for their performance, they don't feel they're getting rewarded for their strong efforts. That can lead to being dissatisfied, ultimately ending in turnover. The opposite view was also noted as a reason to leave the company. When higher performers are giving their all repeatedly, but they see underperformers being tolerated in the workplace, it absolutely sets the wrong tone. In my opinion, it can make you question your own high-performance ethics and may put a seed of doubt in your mind as to why you should continue your top efforts when it doesn't seem to make a difference. In fact, it's almost like the opposite is either being rewarded or being tolerated. 
One final survey I'm going to touch on took place from Inc.com. They took a different approach to identifying why people were really leaving their jobs. They summed it up in their article as four words. Feedback that goes unheard. Ouch. Top on the list was from a survey of 2,000 U.S. part-time and full-time employed adults that said 78% want to take their company surveys and provide feedback. The message I'm seeing here, employees want to be heard. You want to be heard. I want to be heard. That means employees like you and I are willing to speak up. That's a great thing. Another interesting statistic, though, was that of the 2,000 surveyed workers, only half of them received surveys from their employers. Hmm, that's a bit of a head-scratcher, and I think we're going to explore that a little bit further. Second on the list was failure to act leads to employee dissatisfaction. Hmm. Here's a rough statistic to swallow. Nearly half the respondents, 45%, felt their feedback would not lead to meaningful change. So, on one hand, companies providing surveys could be praised because, based on their top item, employees want to share feedback to improve the workplace. However, since only half of the 2,000 surveyed employees received company-based surveys, and the fact that nearly half of those felt meaningful change is possible, that leads us to a mere 25% confidence factor in the promotion towards change. So, again, if you're one of those companies that provide surveys, hats off to you, kudos. But it's important to take the data, take the results genuinely, seriously, and work towards providing change so that your employees can have a confidence for it. For me, that's a staggering number, that 25%, and it shows we have a lot of work to do in our workforce. By the way, that's confirmed from their poll that showed 41% of respondents were looking for a new job. That's nearly half. When you think about it that way, look around your office, your team, perhaps stand up, count the office desks or cubicles around you. Literally, Every other spot may soon be vacated due to the lack of job satisfaction. That can lead to overall reduced productivity, rising costs to replace and train new employees, late deliveries on products or services, and even quality issues. The quality issues can arise because a product could be in the middle of being designed or assembled, or a service could be in the middle of being performed, and a job loss could occur. That may mean there'd be lack of continuity between the outgoing and incoming employees. That could result in delays and other quality-related challenges. Last on the list was Inc.'s great positive statement. Up to 98% of respondents are willing to provide responses to open-ended survey questions from their employers. Let's stop there for a moment. Up to 98% of employees, those working around you and I, are willing from time to time to provide responses to open-ended survey questions from their employers. Wow, this isn't a close-ended yes or no question. This is a fill-in-the-blank, give us your feedback question, and nearly the entire 100% of the team members from one time or another are willing to do that. That's phenomenal. Employers, if you're out there listening, make sure you have some open-ended questions that are meaningful when you ask them. Here's though the problem, here's the rub. The rub comes in with the fact that employers, many of them, lack the tools and resources to thoroughly analyze these responses and then, you got it, act on the data. If this data were acted upon, it could lead to the true voice of the employee being heard. That could lead to the reversal of today's show topic. That could lead to employees feeling their feedback is leading to meaningful change, which then improves company's retention rates and boosts inclusion. So in summary, why are employees leaving their jobs? There's plenty of surveys out there, and I'll put links to those surveys in the show notes if you want to read further. 
you may be affected by one or more of those top five or so that I listed. Bottom line, what can you do individually that takes care of you and looks out for you, number one? If you're in a good work environment, a good situation, what can you do to possibly make a suggestion to your supervisor, manager, human resources, or maybe if you have some type of um, networking group that you could talk to, somebody that works in human resources, and see about doing a survey. It could start out something simple and small, just a few questions to check the pulse, the tone of your company and your teammates. There might be something valuable to learn by doing a simple few question survey. But again, my strong suggestion, if you do so, make sure there are at least one or two open-ended fill-in-the-blank questions and that those questions should be meaningful. Also, if you're going to ask the questions, especially the open-ended ones, have the diagnostic tools to read and analyze that data, as well as the human resources, the personnel and staff to process it and be willing to handle the hard, true facts of the way the employees are feeling so that you can then summarize it, put an action plan together, and act on change. Make employees' voices heard. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, Craig Ansell, for episode 106, Why Employees Are Leaving Their Jobs. Again, if you're having any struggles with your job or you have some questions, maybe you're considering a new job, maybe you're looking for a promotion and not sure the right path, please feel free to reach out on social media at Craig Ansell, C-R-A-I-G-A-N-C-E-L, or email me directly, Craig at CraigAnsell.com. Don't forget to check out our website where we have a lot of free downloads and other information for you to choose from. It's all yours for the taking. It's those, it's for those people that are interested in growth and accelerating their rate to high performance. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you next week. Peace. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media, at Craig Ansell on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.